The biggest draft weekend of the offseason is coming up very soon. We're getting into good vibes, bad vibes, a bunch of news that we need to break down, trying to find you some values for your upcoming drafts. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment, and enjoy the show. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Oh, it's low. Crack it. Crack, crack a lack of. Snap. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the fantasy <laughs> footballers, back with you. Welcome in, one and all. Monday, August 29th. Big, big show today. Lots to talk about. Tons of news. Just got done with one of the biggest draft weekends of the year. Have seen a lot of sparkling, beautiful teams mm. on the Twitter with their draft analyzer grades from the UDK. And we've got the biggest draft weekend of them all coming up soon. So this week will be uh, very important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lots of preseason reaction to talk about. We're doing a good vibes, bad vibes show today. We're picking them up. So, very excited. A couple of headline uh, pieces of news here. If you are drafting this upcoming weekend, make sure you get the ultimate draft kit. I was very happy to get a text from my younger sister who uh, was in her first fantasy draft ever this past weekend. Okay, good for her, good for her. Um, and got her, got her hooked up with the UDK last minute, an hour before. She sent me the roster. This is a brand new per. It's beautiful, Mike. There's there's Cortland Sutton's on the bench. What? There's Allen yeah. Robinson's on the bench. Okay. I mean, okay. she just totally. Sounds like the rest of the league did yeah. not have the ultimate draft kit. It was a ten team league, but still, it was right. it was nice. But check out ultimatedraftkit.com if you get the UDK plus, you can get your uh, draft grade. Share those with us on Twitter. Um. If you want to use the hashtag UDK, we'll be able to find those and reply to some of your rosters. And then the Mega Bowl, uh, if you want to participate in the Mega Bowl. Yes. Uh, oh, brother. Oh, man. <laughs> the Mega Bowl starts this weekend. Uh, the first drafts will kick off on Sunday, which is September 4th. You have Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday before the NFL Season kicks off on Thursday to get in on the Mega Bowl, play in leagues with the Foot Clan, win the Mega Bowl, and Ooh. then play with us in 2023 as part of the Listener League, which we are doing our Listener League draft today. I mean, this is the time, gentlemen. This week, this it weekend, is. let's go. Absolutely, yeah. We'll be we have a live show on Saturday here in Phoenix. It's going to be fun. Quick question of the day from Mike in Minnesota. A league mate and I are planning on doing a podcast for our league this season. Very nice. Like how you guys started out, what tips do you have for running a great league-specific fantasy podcast? Uh, well, first off, I this is incredible. Doing it like the way that Andy and I did it, I mean, I don't know if you can... Like, it's good to have goals, is what yeah. I'm saying. Like, to try yeah. and replicate what we did. You want to shoot like Steph Curry. It doesn't yeah. mean you get to. Yeah. <laughs> Sure, sure, yeah, sure. Yeah. Thank you, Jason. Yeah, uh, no but I mean, it's it's just figuring out what do you want, uh, what do you want to talk about. The way that we ran it, we talked about like the big trades. We would go through the the box scores and see if there were any, uh, you know, like close matchups, and then see did did someone make a a really poor start sit decision, and then we would roast. It's really just it's roasting just, it's people. Shame. It's shame. It's, <laughs> you're you're roasting. The other people in your league. You're remembering it now. Because you have the microphone, and they will listen to every word that you have to say. I will I will say you also pumped them up. It we was, did, it, yeah. it was, it was, if there's If there's anyone to really celebrate, like, oh, man, what a great move. This guy made a surprising start, worked out great, won his, league, won his week, or someone made a great trade. Trades are the best because you're usually going to roast half of the party. Sure. 
and then praise half the party. Yeah, I think anything a commissioner or people in the league can do to build, you know, one of those traditions in your league, power rankings. We used to come out with power rankings every week. The podcast was really fun. Everybody looks forward to it. I know, Kyle, you said you did the podcast thing in one of your leagues. People still beg for it. They ask for it all the time. And you said, no, I don't have 10 hours a week anymore. I have kids. Yeah, all right. 10 hours? You were putting in 10 hours? I'd stay up super late Thursday what? night. A lot of re-recording. What are you? Wow. You know how long uh, Mike and Andy, how much work Mike yeah. and Andy put in on that about 45-minute recording? About 46 minutes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but we're, okay. like I said, what? not everyone can that's be oh, this, boy. Yeah, this level of grace. It's hard. <laughs> but uh, that's awesome. Uh, I love I love anything that makes your league more fun. Yes. News and notes from around the league. Well, the the big news story. Yeah, was it was shocking when it started hitting Twitter and uh, Sleeper and and all of the news reports. But Commanders rookie running back Brian Robinson Jr., who it, 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 literally I had gotten other reports about him basically securing the lead runner job in Washington. Sure seemed that way. Um, he was shot multiple times in an attempted carjacking. The injuries were non-life-threatening. Ron Rivera later tweeted about it, said that he had visited him, he was in good spirits, and then there was a report today that he may be released from the hospital as soon as today. We really don't know the recovery variable here. And, you know, Brian Robinson, the the person comes way before the football player, but this is a football show as well. So we have to address that. Obviously very thankful that this wasn't more severe and that he will be recovering. Yep. Uh, I mean, the, the timeline, we, the, all we really know is a, a rap sheet tweet came out that said Brian Robinson is basically, he's hopeful to play at some point this season. I mean, but with that phrasing, that means you need to leave margin that, he may miss his entire rookie year, or at best, he's gone for multiple months. So I, I, the Manders, I have to imagine they're preparing. They're they're moving forward like they won't have Brian Robinson this year. They're not going to count on him. And what's crazy about that is this has been the off season yes. of Antonio Gibson's demise. He has been from early early off season was on our bus show. Who's you know an ice pick. Um, and, uh, you know, that was looking like he was replaced. And, and the majority of the reason for that was Brian Robinson. And if Brian Robinson, at the very least, isn't going to be ready for the beginning of the year, you've got to... It changes the it cha situation. Absolutely. The the outlook for Antonio Gibson is he's not one fumble away from being able to be just completely benched uh, if uh, the guy that they just drafted on day two is not able to come in and replace him. And I don't know this off the top of my head. I haven't paid t close attention to the very bottom of the depth chart. Is Jarrett Patterson still on the yes, roster? Yes, he is. Yeah, he just played. So uh, what I would say is if you're drafting this upcoming weekend, you're going to have a handful of days here where you may get more information. So we'll be monitoring that. Obviously, um, hopeful that he recovers well. And obviously, football is his dream, right? It, it mm -hmm. goes beyond... Um, anything that we would talk about, it, it's his dream to be playing on that field, and he had established himself as a, an important part of this roster. So hopefully he can get back to doing what he loves doing soon enough and glad it wasn't worse. Uh, we have a shoulder injury being reported, uh, suffered by Deontay Johnson during the preseason game against the Lions. Should not be a long-term issue, according to Field Yates. It was a holy crap catch too it was was that the sideline throw yes, from it was, uh it was trubisky okay it was deontay running a nine just just on the outside and like it audibly may i watched i was watching this one live and just a, got a holy crap out of me as i was watching may have been some, may have been something else too but it was just like a sensational catch full laid out but landed on his shoulder now we we do know that tomlin said had this been week one, Deontay Johnson likely would have been back in the game. Okay. Well, that's good news. He's a player that every time I come up against the potential of Same. drafting him, I end up going somewhere else. And a lot of the time that happens because the narratives for the other players around him sound more enticing, right? The narrative for Deontay Johnson is he had an amazing season, 
but you you know George Pickens gets the offseason hype. You got two quarterbacks. You so don't, we don't even know who the starting quarterback is, right? And so, but at the end of the day, you know, we talk so much about talent winning out and Elijah Moore, right? You know, mm -hmm. who cares who the quarterback is in New York? Elijah Moore can ball. Like Deontay Johnson's proven that to a much greater degree at the NFL sure. level. Yeah, sometimes I look at these drafts and it's like the DK Metcalfs and the Deontay Johnson picks and these like middle round uh, wide receivers. You know they're going to pay dividends. You just don't have that sexy pick feeling. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, th I think the difference there is that those guys are going in that you know fifth round versus Elijah Moore going eighth round. Where, yeah, yeah, the cost is much higher. Yeah, the people that you're picking between them or someone else, you know, is Cortland Sutton and Mike Williams. Najee Harris, uh, speaking of the Steelers, uh, a list Frank sprain early in training camp, played in the final preseason game. So, yeah, I mean, if you remember, why play in the preseason if it's serious? They, uh, this was a couple weeks back. It was, the news at the time was that he got stepped on and he was off to the side and he left practice and so missed a little bit of time, I believe, with that. Watching that game, the, the stat line. Not impressive at all. It was four carries for 10, three receptions for 11 yards. Watching him, though, uh, I believe he had a couple bigger plays called back on penalty. The, if you watch that Lions-Steelers game, holy crap, it was just it was just nonstop penalties. It was very difficult to watch. So it he didn't look like someone who had uh, a, a, a Liz Frank injury that was prohibiting from being able to perform on the field. There were some reports that he got up gingerly a few times throughout the game. So this is it's certainly something that should factor in to where he's being drafted. I think we've kind of had we've been a little bit worried about his ADP because it's first round and we have him ranked a couple spots behind where his ADP is. So this don't take him off your board because of this, but it's another input. Yeah, I mean, you just can't imagine if it was serious they would ever take a chance yeah. on putting him out there in the final preseason game. Uh, Daryl Henderson able to do full speed workouts right now in practice. Cam Akers not able to do that yet, and they are the kickoff game. They play the Bills in ten days. Uh, doesn't feel good. No, no. I mean, if if you're coming off the Achilles and then having other, uh, you know, soft tissue issues. Uh, in your lower body, it's not a great sign. I think right now Daryl Henderson is a is a draft day value. Yes, and Cam Akers is you know risky I, business. I had him on the bus show last Thursday because of this. It's 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 really not his fault. Like if these two guys were being drafted in the exact opposite positions, I'd I'd be like Daryl Henderson is someone I'm avoiding, and Cam Akers is worth that risk. But uh, I think these will be more of a one-two punch. Geno Smith officially named the week one starter for the Seattle Seahawks. This is good news. For Geno or for everybody else? I, I think it's good news for DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. I would much rather have them uh, Geno being the quarterback of this team over Mr. Irresponsible Drew Locke. Who, okay. Uh, I mean, Drew Locke had his opportunity. Like, G he, uh, Geno played a couple snaps, not very much. Then Drew Locke came in and turned the ball over. Twice. Yeah, there Twice. there was a time in which Gino was less responsible. Sure. But compared to Drew, very oh, responsible. Yeah. It's also the second offseason in a row that Drew Locke couldn't win a quarterback competition. Hmm. You remember he was battling. I wonder why. Maybe next year, guys. <laughs> also, please remember all of the very, very positive words from Pete Carroll when this trade happened. Yes. And how they meant nothing. Uh. There are rumors about Darren Waller hiring Drew Rosenhaus as his new agent. I'm mentioning <laughs> this so funny because I might be hiring a new agent. It's good news to me. It, okay. it, it gives, it's very good. News. It gives hope that this, this is more about a lock in and a contract related yes. situation than just the hamstring injury. And most of the time when those situations happen, the guys end up playing that year. So even if he doesn't play in the preseason, the hope is that Darren Waller's lack of practice is a hold in, like you said. Uh, whether they get a deal or not, he's probably out there on the field. Uh, doesn't have uh, enough leverage, I think, to to hold out. Yeah, it could be positive news to to getting him out there and being healthy and and I think making us less afraid to draft him. Yeah, I think it's worth sharing this information, and people can make their own decisions. When I'm in the draft, I. I don't know for sure that this isn't a hamstring. You know, he hasn't uh, said that he's holding in. A lot of players, we know it's we know it's a hold in because <laughs> they basically are saying it's a hold in. Um, on this one, 
now we have hope that it's a hold in. Sure. But I know that his hamstring was injured earlier, so I'm still I'm still out where he's being drafted. Elijah Mitchell returned to practice on Sunday, putting him on track for week one. Debo Samuel missed practice. Should be go good to go for week one. Had a contusion behind his knee. Sam Darnold, high ankle sprain out four to six weeks, so Matt Rule can't do any flippy floppy with uh, Baker and Darnold oh. or anything weird. Oh, yes, he can. He just can't <laughs> use Darnold in the flippy floppy. Uh, Russell Gage, yet to resume practicing. That's not good. I mean, the, 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 the vibes on Russell Gage right now have gone from off-season darling to Mr. Irrelevant. Yeah, I mean, he's he's pretty much undraftable, and this looks like a grade two based on the timeline, so it's more serious than, uh, you know, the the little you hoo Julio Jones, man. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you have to, take him, take you have him to glance late. his direction for sure. Oh, it's, it's more than a glance for me at this point. Uh, Ty Montgomery left the final preseason game for the Patriots. If you didn't know that he was yeah. their potential third down James White running back, he was. That's what his role was going to be in this offense, and the injury seemed significant. Uh, Damian Harris from Andre Stevenson. They've been getting third down work already in the preseason. Ramondre seems like a really like strong floor for where he's yep. being drafted. He's very interesting. That should he really be the the player that gets that passing role? Which he has the ability. He does. I mean, he's a, a much larger dude than we're used to in that role. Because for years for the Patriots, it's been a you know a smaller scat back. But Stevenson has the chops. All right, do we have any other breaking news, gentlemen? I'm not seeing any any uh, more news. Let's move on. Good vibrations. All right, we are going to further dig into the preseason storylines, the good vibes, bad vibes. Uh, we had the privilege of seeing at least a number of teams kind of take a you know, starters approach this past week and give them a drive or two or even more. Last season when we did this episode, this was when Mike brought up Damian Harris's good vibes heading into the season. He ended up being very valuable. We also talked about the Bills passing game looking strong in the preseason. Jason brought that up and how it looked like maybe not a one-year wonder and that obviously proved to be true. So you can get an indication this time of year about you know, the direction of these teams, I will begin with a team that I think some feel we don't give enough respect to. What? But I think respect is earned. And That's they true. earned it today, which I'm going to say my good vibes candidate is the Bears Whoa. offensive performance Whoa. for the final preseason game because you saw in a super impressive Justin Fields. Let's start there. Yeah. Um, went 13 for 13 from a clean pocket for 145 yards and three touchdowns. He looked great rolling out. Yes. Made great decisions. Uh, it certainly threw into the back of your mind that this was a Matt Nagy problem. And, yes, it's one preseason game. I, I'm not going to overstate it, but this is good vibes, right? Right. And you don't get better vibes than 13 for 13 from a clean pocket. Ended up uh, with three touchdowns on three drives very encouraging also found Ryan Griffin found Cole Komet for a mm -hmm. touchdown both tight ends found Dante Pettis for a touchdown who apparently will have a role because you don't have other wide receivers outside of Darnell Mooney but very encouraged by Justin Fields and I'm just I want to bring that up because if Justin Fields has something if he has an offensive line that can do more for him than than they did last year then there's no reason why Justin Fields can't be in similar discussions to the reasons why you like a Trey Lance. Sure. Like those are such a, you know, Justin Fields is not being drafted. Trey Lance is everybody's darling, but the gap is not that big. If you get better performance from the offensive line and Justin Fields looks anything like he did during week one, it was so nice to see or then sorry, final weekend. Utilize him on those rollouts so much more effectively where it's like using Fields' strength, which, yeah, really did seem like a Matt Nagy. You watch this and you go, there's a lack of a Matt Nagy problem here. <laughs> and that's very similar to my good vibes. Well, let me, let me finish. Oh, sure. Yeah, sure. I, have, yeah. I have some other players to talk about here on the Bears offense. One is Cole Komet, who has looked really strong this preseason. 
Um, he's being he's kind of our late round pick at the tight end position, um, which we'll talk. I'll talk about that a little bit more in the context of my bad vibes later. But then I want to bring up David Montgomery yep. because Montgomery played twenty of the twenty two start starter snaps on this offense. So yes, he did. Khalil Herbert only came in for two snaps. It's very evident that he's the backup. I mean, this is a lot like. You know, we've seen Madison, Alexander Madison, perform spectacularly every time he's been given a full-time opportunity, but he's never – that's never meant he gets a bigger role in the offense when Dalvin Cook's healthy. This is at least encouraging for those taking David Montgomery later that he should be okay. He should be in that starter role. And what if this offense can do more than we think it can do? Because Montgomery has done a lot for fantasy – with not a lot from the offense, not a lot of, you know, moving the ball down the field frequently. So I think there are some optimistic thoughts here for Montgomery. I think David Montgomery is is an even bigger piece and a bigger takeaway. It's it's amazingly good for him because what we saw, you know, we talked about him a little bit last week of, and, and I said, there's a new coaching staff. We don't know that they're going to use David Montgomery as the workhorse like we've always seen. Now, if you fast forward to week one, Right, like after week one where we've seen the real teams and what they're doing, like, okay, NFL's here, the game plans have been revealed. If we saw the utilization that we just saw in their, you know, warm up game where they were playing their starters, we'd go, Oh man, we made a huge mistake. It is going to be David Montgomery as the guy. This is the only chance to make that change. You have to project and predict what's going on into the season and we saw I believe it's true so like for me I David Montgomery goes from a guy I'm scared to draft to kind of the last guy in the tier uh, where I'm willing to draft them now um he, he was the he was the beginning of the dead zone to me where I was bypassing him now he's the end of the non-dead zone running back yeah going behind Cam Akers which yeah. is kind of wild so uh but yeah the Bears vibes very positive, and then I'll just throw it out there as a sentence. The Saints offense as well looked great in their kind of tune-up heading into the year. Uh, Landry, Olave, Winston, Camara. Yeah, that was – I mean – Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in because that is my good Oh, vice, I, I didn't realize that. My good yeah. vice player is Alvin Camara. If you watched uh, the, uh, the snaps where Jameis was in and the starters were in, Alvin Camara looked – like Alvin Kamara, yeah, he looked yeah. sensational. And if you're if you're just box score hunting, it wasn't as good because Kamara had multiple big plays that unfortunately got called back uh, for for penalties. So you just that's you don't have that context, which would be if we could get just like a you know uh, a, a resource here of like plays called back by penalty, it would be the. the NFL, I would really appreciate oh, yeah, that. Those are so hard. I I get it. Because like, was the play only because of the the penalty? Totally understand that. But you. But it would be good it, data to have. So uh, so Camara looked fantastic, and over this entire offseason, Camara's just been in this weird, nebulous zone of yeah, we all have him as a top ten running back, but he's got off the field stuff. Jameis Winston, can, is he really gonna be good enough for this? for this offense to keep it going. He's coming off of his own devastating knee injury. We have a new coach, Sean Payton, the offensive guru is gone. Like it just was a mess of you didn't really know what to do with Alvin Kamara. And like you can see that in his ADP, you know, on sleeper, running back 10, going in the middle of the second round. And I think that Kamara is Kamara's just going to be exactly what he has always been for his entire career, which is a stud running back one and he is being not drafted that way. Yeah, I mean, you've had that cloud of the legal issues hanging over him all off season. So, uh, yeah, he looked great. He looked vintage. I, uh, it was a reminder for me. I was talking to Mike about this uh, the other day after we both watched it, and it was like it was a reminder of, yeah, he's really good. Yeah, You just watch him run, and you're like, man, I – I still has the juice. Yeah, I've been forgetting. I, I do wonder, though, if you're going to – because under the bre – you know, he had that huge touchdown year – with Breeze, you know, Mark Ingram came in, finished the drive. It seems like he's going to be the goal line option. So it's not like Kamara can't score from six, you know, six yards out, eight yards out, 40 if, yards out. If I recall, this is just off the top of my head, so it could be wrong. I think it was one of those Kamara had a huge chunk play and just got dragged down right in front. And like we just talked to Austin Eckler about that of like, 
do you really need the you, do you need the rep off? And he said, yeah, yeah, we got to take that. So I I think that could have been a product of that of Kamara just needed a Ingram needed had, to catch his breath. Yeah, Ingram had a couple uh, red zone touchdowns, I believe, in this game. Did he have two? Yep. Yeah, he had okay. two. Uh, all right, Jason. Look forward to hearing from you, but not right now. In a minute. Oh my gosh, I'm looking forward to hearing from you, Jason. <laughs> oh, look no further. Uh, I'm going to talk about the grown-ups. The grown-ups in Jacksonville. The Jaguars, <laughs> who last year were uh, treated and ran by a toddler. Uh, I mean, just you had a, a newborn baby, Trevor Lawrence, coming in trying to find his way to walk He in needed the NFL. a parent. Yeah, and he was being raised by a toddler. That's It didn't work well. It was a disaster last year. But the vibes out of Jacksonville feel mature. They feel like what you want an NFL team uh, to be doing. Trevor Lawrence has looked really good in camp and in the limited action that we've seen him in. He's looked really good. Christian Kirk has also looked really good. He was targeted on 36.3% of his routes uh, in the preseason game against the Steelers. And, you know, I mean, they rested their starters this last week, which I feel like is almost a good thing because this is a mental game in Jacksonville where it's – look, Keep, Doug keep the good vibes it, heading into the year? Exactly. Doug Peterson is here. Uh, Urban Meyer is gone. That dumpster fire. I mean, when you, when you hear the players talk about the difference and you see Trevor Lawrence smirk and smile and try to politely walk the uh, – not going to be petty the line. politically yeah. correct line while still dropping bombs. <laughs> I mean, it's just well done. Um, I, I really feel like things are uh, positive. And, and the, you know, you've seen Travis Etienne um, has been a really explosive playmaker that a lot of the beat camp reporters are talking about, just the most explosive player on the field. J and this isn't about his fantasy value. This is James Robinson is positive it's it, he looks like he might actually be there for week one uh he's not going to go on the pup I mean everything has broken really really well Zay Jones uh, an offseason signing has looked great in camp so there's been no negativity around this team that was mired in neg <laughs> urban mired oh, in negativity oh, that, that was very nice that was very nice uh, uh, complete accident complete accident okay. but a uh, wonderful even better yeah um you know, it was just everything was so bad last year that maybe this is just neutral and it seems extra positive because you're out of the mucky muck. Yeah, when the house isn't on fire, you know. Right, that's great news. Uh, but I actually think things have been not just average but really positive. And, and their, their season is going to go as Trevor Lawrence goes, but he is a sleeper pick to me. Uh, the first four matchups, Washington, uh, Indianapolis, the Chargers, Philly for uh, Trevor Lawrence, I think. I think week one, you could come out and have a great start to the season. All right. All right. Well, I am going to transition us into the more negative bad vibes part of this show. And I'm actually going to – it was difficult. There's there's plenty of options. And this one wasn't as earned a, as others with play this preseason, but it is reflecting kind of my direction on this player uh, – which is much different than it was in the beginning of the offseason. And I'm going to go with Zach Ertz. Oh, no. I know. I oh, know, don't do that. Yeah, Mike, you've got to be so disappointed. Oh, He's your favorite. Uh, he didn't play in the preseason. He has a calf injury. Um, he exited early on August 4th with that injury. And the more I look at this situation with Zach Ertz, like very, very early in the offseason, you had a really strong, clear narrative with Zach Ertz. You paid him. He was very involved with DeAndre Hopkins' absence. And, you know, you're going to need him again because DeAndre Hopkins was suspended for six weeks. So it's kind of like A plus B equals we'll see more Zach Hurts getting targeted. But having not played this offseason, having the team make what I think are two significant target moves in the draft that negatively impact Zach Hurts's uh, output, which is you draft the number one tight end in the draft, Trey McBride. You also draft uh, Hollywood, or you trade your draft pick for Hollywood Brown, who is somebody that Kyler knows and is going to soak up some targets. You re-sign AJ Green. You talk about Rondale Moore. 
you know, there are a lot of reasons why I'm looking at Zach Ertz, and I even looked at his performances last year once he arrived in Arizona, which were pretty impressive overall. He was on 125 target pace in that time. He only finished one week inside the top five at the position. So he was very steady, but I don't know if I want to go and invest this kind of late middle round tight end draft pick when I have upside tight ends later, a David Njoku, a Cole mm -hmm. Komet, some of these players that I think can give you burst weeks that are inside the top five, you know, you can definitely do worse than Zach Ertz. I just don't know if the trade is worth it, what you could draft where you're drafting him anymore. And I don't know if you guys agree at all with this take, but I am just find myself, I, I've just found myself ignoring Zach Ertz in drafts and just not seeing the upside because I know it's not going to get better once Hopkins comes back. Yeah, I still think he will be very usable for those first six weeks. Um, it, it, maybe the the ceiling is not there the way that you're describing it, Andy. But it, so his draft price is really not my favorite. But I, I think there is there's still home leagues where he will fall and be kind of the one of the final three tight ends selected. At that point, I'm okay with it depending on your roster build, because you know that he will at least get a few catches. But let me ask you're, you two you're names. Right, but he is an, an expiring fantasy player. Let me ask you two names, okay. both of you guys. Dallas Goddard, we've seen him go off the boards. Right. Um, I feel like he feels a little bit more like an upside tight end. Mm -hmm. Goes almost in the same spot, I guess a round earlier. And then Dawson Knox is basically back-to-back -back with him. You know, Jason, we know that there are tar target opportunities there. You've talked about Beasley's absence. Gabe Davis has a role to step into, but Dawson Knox has to benefit from that. Yeah, he, he very well could benefit th from that. I mean, obviously, they brought in superstar O.J. Howard, so uh, you're a little <laughs> yes. scared. As far as um, Dallas Goddard, though, I would rather draft Dallas Goddard the round earlier, not just at the same price as Ertz. Uh, I think Dallas Goddard has juice, has... Uh, an oh, he's a good player. Yeah, he's, he's a great player, and there's a lot of fear um, you know, because AJ Brown comes in and you go, oh, if they don't pass much, look, uh, this was one of the top 10 tips and tricks to remember leaving last year. It's that all the tight ends suck. Okay. So, uh, the Dallas Goddard and, and Dawson Knox, if you're not Travis Kelsey, Mark Andrews, maybe Kyle Pitts this year, then you're going to be bad. And so what I want is I want upside. I want someone that, uh, can catch touchdowns, can break a tackle and run. So I would agree with you that the, the vibes haven't been great for Zach Ertz, and I find myself looking for the cheaper option in Cole Komet, who is younger, more athletic right. at this point, yeah. and a, t a target hog probably even more so than Zach Ertz. I would take the Muth two rounds later. Heck okay. yeah. I think the he Muth looked, could... He looked good yesterday. He could stay very loose this year. The Muth... Is Luth? I mean, he's 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 always Luth, but he's again. It's a young. I mean, we they, yeah. they shouldn't have even been. He's he, got the youth. He's got the youth. Nice, <laughs> very nice. You know who doesn't have the youth? Who? I'm gonna bring up the bad vibes. Oh boy! On, on the Buccaneers, led by 45 year old Tom Brady. You wanna you no, wanna poke this bear? I'm not. No, this isn't me calling for anybody's demise. <laughs> I'm not poking this bear. I'm just sharing how the vibes have been at different camps. And the vibes have not been great around the Bucks. It was weird that Tom Brady was gone for 11 days and just, you know, it was this, oh, we, we all knew this was pre-planned. We just never said anything until the day it happened. Nonsense. Um, and, and you watch his press conference when he comes back. And he's asked the question, he goes, look, I'm, I'm 45 years yeah, old now. That was I got, a sad press conference. I got a lot of expletive Stuff. going on. <laughs> You know, he's, he didn't look, you know, like happy-go-lucky Tom Brady that we've been used to over the uh, last four, 45 years. And it gets worse. The offensive line vibes are horrific. I mean, they lost Pro Bowl center Ryan Jensen. They lost left guard Aaron uh, Stinney. They've got their backup center, Robert Hainsey, just got injured this last game. He walked off, so he hopefully is okay. Nick Leverett, who is vying for that uh, guard spot, who came in as the backup, uh, got injured. Uh, Tristan Wirfs didn't play because of an oblique injury. Th that's all after they lost Alex Kappa in free agency. And we know from history of Tom Brady, when he gets pressure up the middle. Yeah, it's over. 
that's the only time that is his kryptonite superman yeah. has the rock uh the, <laughs> the, that, rock. The, the kryptonite superman's got his <laughs> his one thing against him and tom brady <laughs> has kryptonite superman has the rock yeah, the the kryptonite rock. He didn't want to say kryptonite about. again. <laughs> yeah, I just said kryptonite. So I, yeah, he wanted to. to mix the, the order of operations was very funny. No, and, it was great. And so but now I'm just picturing the rock as his actual <laughs> yes. like Superman cannot. Uh, and 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 with Tom Brady, it's always been pressure up the middle, and the middle of this offensive line is decimated. You've had Russell Gage missing. Obviously, uh, Mike Evans is back, but he had his hamstring. It's just it hasn't been smooth sailing for the yeah, Bucks. It hasn't been a normal positive off season that you're used to uh, seeing for a Tom Brady team. And so I just I caution. Um, I, I guess when I am on the clock, I've been looking at Brady, uh, where he's going. Someone that over the last couple of years I've always had as like my favorite late round if I don't get one of the mobile guys up front give me Tom Brady where I'm just so confident now it's like it's cheaper to get Kirk Cousins yeah, who I, I mean, think is but you know he might have a better year yeah you you have to Oof. you have to make a bet on Julio Jones why make that bet he was released from Tennessee he was awful so even if even if you've got Antonio Brown in the back of your mind like Brown was playing at an elite level yes he was. whenever he hit the field Julio has not been himself in a couple of years, and you know what's in him? Is it an AJ Green season? I mean, one preseason catch from Julio Jones does not make me confident. And then you got changes with the stability, not having Bruce Arians, who is the offensive mind. You know, they may have all these pieces there to keep it stable, but Bruce Arians is still a driver of that ship. There are some questions. Let's put it sure. that way. Where like someday we'll be right. I mean, someday he will. <laughs> He will not be the same player, or he'll retire before he isn't. All right, my bad vibes, and I we, we just, we're pouring it on here, but it's because this guy has not got it together. Not smooth, very flat. Kenny Galladay of the New York Giants. We're never playing the other drop. What in the freaking world, Kenny Galladay of like you left last season of we just there was at least a little part of me that was willing to throw that season in the garbage of the the management for the team Joe Judge Jason Garrett like it's a a a preseason injury to Kenny Galladay I was willing at the end to kind of overlook those things and say maybe he can bounce back and have value not be elite but have value <laughs> and try and sort of return on this contract that the Giants gave him. I don't think that he's going to. Uh, he, over the preseason, we have <laughs> we have 51 snaps. 51 snaps for Kenny Galladay. That has turned into one reception for six yards. 51 snaps, one reception. This is an absolute catastrophe. Kenny Galladay has completely plummeted this for, is the definition of bad vibes they, like this the, these are like not just tremors these are not mild vibrations for kenny galladay this is like bridge destroying yeah the richter scale is all over yes this is we're done we are done here with kenny galladay yeah we always say you know no one is off the draft board it just depends on where the value yeah. is and i would take him <laughs> if i was in a 45 round draft <laughs> Um, and once I start not knowing the names of players, so let's let's try to turn it positive, Jason. Okay. If Kenny Galladay is done, like if you're gonna bury him, finished. Yep. Not worth. I mean, clearly in all those snaps, nobody wanted to throw him the ball. Yep. He was not in practice. He can't get open. What does that mean for the? I mean, someone has to catch the ball. Sterling Shepard has is, the Achilles injury. Yeah. This is this is a two man show with Kadarius Tony and Wondell Ooh. Robbins. Kadarius Tony and might lost, be ready. They lost for week Colin one. Johnson too, like who was a promising young player to an ACL. I have I have certainly started like this is good by good vibes, bad vibes, and the bad vibes to me are they go a little bit beyond Kenny Galladay. Like in, early in the offseason, there was a lot of excitement. I I've been a fan of Kadarius Tony, but. He has not been able to stay on the field. He's currently not healthy. They're not sure he's ready week one, so it's hard to draft him. Wandale, I think, is a really, really good player. He's starting as the slot-wide receiver, so that's that's great. But outside of that, the, 
everything's kind of gone poorly. It's it's not you know. Ooh, uh, I got something for you. D- Daniel Jones hasn't looked great. Kenny Galladay hasn't looked great. Great. Kadarius Tony's been injured, and I've started to question the whole Brian Dable narrative, um, where it's like, oh, he is, you know, he's going to bring his system over. But I was looking at his, you know, it, it, deeper in his history. I just I'm going to read you his history as an offensive coordinator okay. passing passing yardage ranks uh oh wow 32nd 29th 23rd 32nd 31st still has a job 26th wait what, for what it seems are these uh th- well this was for uh cleveland miami kansas city and buffalo okay so somehow kept getting those jobs uh and then third and ninth so maybe dayball was the change or maybe it was josh allen yeah I'm, Isn't that always the uh, <laughs> right? Maybe it was Ken Wisenhunt. Maybe it was Kurt Warner. Right. I'm sure that Adam Gase was just so good as a as a coordinator when he had Peyton Manning. Is there any chance? That's interesting. Is there any chance that this turns into way more receptions for Saquon Barkley? Sure. I mean, he's going to be on the field, and we know vacated targets often go to the running back position. So. And that's the, the biggest issue with me with with Saquon Barkley, aside from you know, bad luck with the health has been Daniel Jones. When we have seen them in a small sample, he's not checking it down to Saquon the way that Eli Manning did. And, but if no one else on the field can actually catch the ball other than Wandale and everyone else, you know, Galladay's toast, Tony just can't stay healthy. Darius Slayton there. I feel like they want to trade him. He's the only guy that has shown a rapport with Daniel Jones at all in the last handful of years. Um, Asked if uh, Kenny Galladay's roster spot is in question. Instead of shutting that down, Brian Dable said, all those receivers are competing. Joe and I will sit sit back and talk about everything. He did come out afterwards and clarify that he is not in consideration oh, for being cut. Yeah, you because you can't. Yeah, literally, he's, his dead cap is He enormous. should have been like, do you know what that would cost us? <laughs> I wish he's no, got. A, he's on the roster. He's got a really big role. Wink, wink. Um, get healthy, Kadarius. You have an opportunity here. Yes, you do. Uh, Wandale, while very talented, is not the kind of. He's not a backbone wide receiver, right? He's not an outside uh, target that's going to. You know, he's going to be part of a system, not somebody you can lean on at at five foot eight. Kenny Galladay's dead cap this year would be thirty one <laughs> million yeah. dollars. Uh, I mean, he's. He's not getting cut. Thirty-one million. Wait, what's to he, get him out of your presence? Do you have what's he being paid this year? Uh, right now his base salary is thirteen million. Okay. His cap hit is twenty-one million. His dead cap is thirty-one million. Did he score at all last year? I Has would, he ever scored? He scored as much as Brooks last year. Okay, not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man, get bodied. <laughs> so uh, zero, so zero, zero t- How much was his contract total value? Seventy something. It was a lot for zero touchdowns. Yeah, I mean that was a that's what you call a bad decision. Four and years, seventy two million. That was the off season where no wide receivers of any kind got money. Will Fuller settled for a one year deal. Nobody else got paid. It was the Nelson how, Aguilar. I was going to say, how dare you? Nelson Aguilar got a huge bag. But like you were expecting, you know, Kenny got he got his money. I mean, Waller might. Want to, who's the who represents Kenny Galladay? Right, Waller might want to look into that. Yeah, maybe. Well, Kenny Galladay was going to come in and fix Daniel Jones, but now it's going to be Brian Dable that fixes Daniel Jones. Don't worry, guys. Oh man. All right. So the vibes are g- not good for Kenny G. <laughs> no, no. I, I, Viking funeral. Yeah, and giant it, funeral. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the hard part. Is it's like you want to, you want to see some optimism for these teams that have struggled on offense yes I mean, we're talking about a lot of them today you know jacksonville it's been a struggle the giants it's been you know every other team in that division has won it a, a bunch of times in the last 10 years the giants can't do it um it's tough it's tough to climb out the chicago bears that offense you see some optimism in the preseason it's the preseason so sure. got to temper those expectations i the uh uh this is just a minor good vibration because even like Andy, as you're giving the you know, the Chicago Bears one, this one you also have to like. Uh, I'm a little nervous sharing this. Uh, <laughs> it's all right, safe space, Mike. Uh, do you guys know who the number one graded passer from Pro Football Focus is over the preseason? I do not. Number one graded passer in the preseason. Yeah. 
I is it Desmond Ritter? No, it's the starter for that team. Marcus Mariota. Marcus Mariota okay. is the currently the high what, and is done because preseason is over. The highest graded passer of the preseason. Small sample because he only threw the ball twelve times, but how funny he looked pretty good. He look he looked healthy. He was moving around. He has some of that the cheat code with the legs and, and the cheat code with Kyle Pitts. Like that's what I'm, if that's really where it goes to me is. If Marcus Mariota is going to – I don't need him to be great. I just need him to be competent. If he's actually going to be competent, then Kyle Pitts feels way safer at that third-round draft uh, draft cost. The preseason story for Pitts is why I like taking him, which is everything can be bad for three and a half quarters – but Kyle Pitts is one of the only tight ends in, in football that can catch a 52-yard pass across the middle. Like, so good. You know, that's never going to happen with Zach Ertz. Zach Ertz needs to pile up five catches to get the fantasy points that Pitts gets on one catch. Yeah, and, and also from the preseason, he's lined up almost. Uh, he's, yeah, he's, he's a, a wide, wide receiver. Yes. He's playing wide receiver. I don't know when his contract comes up for renegotiation, this is going to be a Jimmy Graham problem where they're going to say he's a tight end and he's going to say, I'm a wide receiver. And he's right because he's a wide receiver, and you get to play him at tight end. So I am. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't have any problem drafting uh, Kyle Pitts where he's going anymore. I mean, it's just he's unstoppable. When you say when you talked about uh, the preseason story for him, I thought the story was going to be she's enormous. He's right. The story is just look at that dude. Well, and they'll have they'll have red zone opportunities there, and we know Matt Ryan really really struggled in the red zone. You know, he struggled last year to get the ball to Kyle Pitts. He only had one touchdown. If Pitts scores like a median amount of touchdowns based on his targets last year, yeah, he would have been the, you know, this would have been a game-breaking rookie season. So I took him in our family league in the third round like a wild man because I wanted him on the roster. I don't mind it. Uh, so uh, lots to look forward to there. Ironic talking about, like you said, a bunch of these negative uh -huh. offensive situations that maybe have some fruit. I mean, Cordero, in the midst of a, a rough season, had value there. Yes, he did. So, uh, any other uh, vibes, Kyle? Do you have anything that came to mind for you? Desmond Ritter's look good, too. I'm know. proud of the Falcons, but I don't want to be mediocre. <laughs> you want to be bad. You need that draft. You man. want the draft capital? Okay. Anybody else that you guys wanted to uh, bring up? or I, I definitely want to echo the sentence that has been said twice, which the passing game for the Saints and Jameis Winston. Yeah. I, I do. I think he's going to be able to move this offense very easily. Chris Olave and Landry and Michael Thomas and Alvin Kamara. He's going to I, – I think the Saints offense will be very good, and their defense will be good. All right, that is going to do it for today's episode of the podcast. Make sure you're ready for your drafts this weekend. It's going to be fun. Ours is Friday night. Check out the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.